what is going on everybody my name is nico and welcome back to another pokemon scarlet and violet guide video today i'm going to be teaching you guys everything you need to know about breeding in pokemon scarlet and violet so that way you guys can either start breeding competitive pokemon shiny pokemon doing this that or the other whatever you need to know i'm going to cover it here in this particular video so if this is your first time here on the channel make sure you are subscribed for more pokemon scarlet and violet videos from me in the future but let's get into it so the first thing we need to talk about is the basics because in pokemon scarlet and violet we lost the daycare the daycare is no more and if you're familiar with breeding in the game everybody used to go to the daycare to handle their breeding because that's just what we did and now it has been replaced with picnics in pokemon scarlet and violet picnics are the way that we go about getting eggs and are able to actually breed pokemon so what you want to do is find an area that you can start a picnic and you need to have two Pokemon in your party that you want to breed together. They need to be compatible, whether it be from the same egg group or with a ditto, which I will cover here very briefly, but you need to have two compatible Pokemon out that can breed. And as you sit here, you don't have to run around or do anything crazy like we used to in the past. You can literally just sit here. As you sit here, Pokemon will start spawning eggs in this basket. The max amount of eggs that you can have in this basket here at the end of your table is 10. Once there's 10 eggs, you need to pull them all out and then you need to simply just wait again and you'll get another 10 eggs. Now, worth noting that the eggs that you pull out of this box will not go into your backpack like they used to. They will go immediately to whatever PC box that you had open previously. So before you open the picnic, you want to make sure you go to an empty box or somewhere that you actually want the eggs to go because that is where they're all going to head off to. Now, in terms of getting yourself a Ditto, which Ditto can breed with any Pokemon in the game, aside from Legendaries and Paradox Pokemon, you're going to want to come over to Medali. Medali is the town that you're going to be able to find Ditto at. As you can see, it's already showing up on the map here. And I'm going to show you how you can actually track down a Ditto. Now, a lot of people will tell you that you can like run around and like interact with the Pokemon and see if they behave in a certain way. However, what you can actually do to know exactly what the Pokemon is, is you can lock on to the Pokemon and it'll tell you, oh, that's a Meowth. If I look, that's a Persian. And I can just keep running around and doing this until I find myself a Ditto. We're going to run around and we're going to look till I find a Ditto. Now, if you don't have Ditto already registered in the Pokedex, or if you haven't seen a Ditto, they're going to show up as question marks instead of the actual name of the Pokemon. See, that's Meowth. Persian. And I'll run around until I find one for you. See, that's a Zerua. Zerua hides as well. And you can do this lock-on feature by pressing L2 or the left trigger. There it is. There's a Ditto right there. You see it shows the name and everything. All you have to do is run into it. And it'll turn back into Ditto. And that's really all you have to do. It's a very easy process. But another thing you can do outside of using a Ditto, because obviously Ditto breeds with everything, is you can use Pokemon from the same egg groups. And egg groups are a category that Pokemon are placed in that allow them to breed together. So if you go to Cerebi, which I'll have this linked in the description below, you can actually check out every egg group and what Pokemon can actually breed together. And it's worth noting that if you want to use egg groups to breed, the female Pokemon is going to be the Pokemon that actually spawns the next Pokemon. So it, let's say, for example, I'm going to use a female Pikachu and what else is in this game and a Doug Trio. Female Pikachu and a male Doug Trio, right? The female is going to determine what egg spawns. So the Doug Trio is not going to pass down. You're not going to hatch a Diglett. You're going to hatch a Pikachu or in this case, a Pichu. You're going to hatch a Pichu because you're using a female Pikachu in this scenario, right? So any female that you're using in an egg group is going to determine the offspring of the next Pokemon. Next up, I'm going to talk about sandwiches because sandwiches are pretty important when it comes to actually hatching eggs more quickly or getting eggs more quickly. If you watched my breeding guide video for shiny Pokemon, you'll know that I made a sandwich in that video that gives you egg power. And egg power is the ability that you get from eating certain types of sandwiches that give you faster egg spawns. So you can gather eggs that much more quickly, giving you that many more opportunities in that case to get a shiny or in this case to get whatever Pokemon you are looking for. So I will try and track down a, a list of all the different stuff that you can actually use to increase your egg power. But in my understanding, and if the recipe that I'm going to give you, fruit seems to cause the increased spawns. So fruit is what's more likely to give you egg power. So using fruits on your sandwiches is going to increase that. So the sandwich that I use that gives you egg power level two is going to be butter, bananas, 
and peanut butter. Combine those three ingredients to make a sandwich. It's like called the great peanut butter sandwich or something like that. And you will then get egg power level two. You can also go to restaurants scattered throughout the map and restaurants will also have meals that can give you different egg power levels. So if you don't want to use the resources or don't want to make the sandwiches yourself, you're able to actually go ahead and just buy them. And you can check on this and see where you're at consistently with your egg power by simply pressing right on the D-pad. And that's going to tell you a bunch of information regarding what you have left in terms of the time it's usually 30 minutes so you can just set a timer on your phone if you want but i rather i personally just click the right trigger not the right trigger excuse me right on the d-pad to then proceed and look what you were able to uh what time you have left now when it comes to hatching pokemon obviously you need to have the eggs in your party to hatch them so drop in five uh, Pokemon eggs into your party and then you're able to hatch them to hatch them more quickly though You're going to want a Pokemon with flame body flame body is an ability. It is not a move I had somebody ask this question in my breeding guide uh, for shinies and it is an ability that a Pokemon has so Pokemon that have this are Charcadet Fletchling and Volcarona. These are the big ones that come to mind. You throw it at the front of your party, it's going to let you hatch eggs that much more quickly. And then you can keep, you know, farming for whatever you're looking for. It's just a faster method of hatching the eggs to be less time consuming. Now I'm briefly, briefly going to touch on shiny breeding because like I said, I already have a full video for that. So you guys go click over there if you want to know all the specifics of it. But shiny breeding simply requires you to use two Pokemon from different languages. So this doesn't have to be a Japanese ditto. So many people think this has to be like a Japanese ditto specifically. This could be a ditto from any region out there. That's not your language. So I play the game in English. I have a German ditto that I use for my breeding. That works perfectly fine because I don't speak German. My game is not in German. So that ditto works for the Masuda method. That is going to increase my odds and give me a higher percent chance of getting shinies. Now, again, if you want the full breakdown of all those stats, what the different numbers are, plus the shiny charm, all that fun stuff, check that video out. It is linked here. There'll be a little thing up top here that you guys can click, but let's continue on. Now we're going to talk about transferring Pokeballs over because a lot of people like to collect certain Pokemon and certain Pokeballs. So this is kind of important to certain people. So just like with the, um, just like with breeding in general, like I said earlier, the female determines a lot. Like if you're breeding from different egg groups and you use a female Pikachu with a male dog trio, the female is going to determine what the offspring is. And this is the same scenario for Pokeballs and a lot of other stuff involved in breeding. So if you're using a Ditto, you can use any Pokemon, male or female, and the ball that the non-Ditto has. So if you're, say, let's, for example, you're breeding with a, you know, Quaxly. You're breeding with a Quaxly. Quaxly has a Dusk Ball or whatever Pokeball that you want on it, a Quick Ball. That Pokeball is then going to transfer on from that Pokemon, not the Ditto. It's going to transfer from the Quaxly. Now, if you're breeding with a male and a female Quaxly and they're in two different Pokeballs, one has a normal Pokeball, one has a Quick Ball, there is a 50% chance that one gets a Pokeball or the other gets the Quick Ball. There's a 50% chance that that offspring spawns with the ball that you're looking for. However, if you're going back to egg groups and say, again, we have our our male Doug Trio and we have our female Pikachu and the Doug Trio is in a normal Pokeball and the Pikachu is in a Quick Ball. The Pokeball that transfers is the female's Pokeball. So you're going to have a Pichu with a Quick Ball. That's what happens. Moving on, we're going to talk about natures here. Natures are stats that your Pokemon has that is going to increase a certain uh, stat and decrease another as a counterpart. So I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to go just to my game and you're going to see right there that we have the uh, Defense being decreased with the nature that my Quackwivel has and the speed being increased. So if I go over and I look, it has a hasty nature and natures can be passed on to offspring. Now, first off, if you want to go and catch a bunch of Pokemon with a bunch of different natures, you are able to do that with synchronize. Synchronize is an ability that a Pokemon can have. And then whatever Pokemon you run into in the wild will have the same nature as that synchronized Pokemon. So for example, you the biggest example is Ralts. Ralts is the most common synchronized Pokemon. It's always early on in the game. You're able to get a bunch of them. If you have a Ralts with synchronize and say it has an adamant nature, all the wild Pokemon that you run into will also have an adamant nature. However, the issue with this becomes you have to catch a bunch of Ralts with that nature in order to then have the ability to transfer to whatever Pokemon you're looking for. Where I find it to just be easier to avoid the synchronized method altogether. And you can simply catch a bunch of Pokemon until you get the nature that you're looking for and then pass that on with an Everstone. And Everstone is a really useful tool that passes on whichever Pokemon is holding the Everstone while breeding, that nature will then transfer on. So say you're using your Ditto and again, you have a Quaxly. The Quaxly has 
a hasty nature like my Quackwibble does. If you wanted to have another Quaxley with a hasty nature, you give that Quaxley an Everstone and it will pass on that nature to the offspring. And you can buy Everstones at the Delibird Presents store and Mesagoza. That's the store I always go to because it's just easiest to get there. But you can buy the Everstone there and then give it to whatever Pokemon you're breeding with. So that way you can get the nature. Now there is another way to change natures and this is after the breeding process. And these are through nature mints. As you can see, I've got like the Brave Mint on screen here, the comments right here. And these items allow you to change the nature of whatever Pokemon you want to whatever nature is listed on the mint. So if I wanted to change my Quackable from Hasty to Calm, I would give it the Calm Mint. However, this change does not transfer down through breeding. The mint only applies to that Pokemon. So if I were to give my Quaxley or my Quackwivel here the Calm Mint and I bred with it and gave it the Everstone, it would still have a hasty nature when that Pokemon bred. So it only affects the Pokemon you're looking for. This just kind of helps you if you, you know, don't have an Everstone or if you're just looking for a certain nature, you're able to simply apply whatever you want to the Pokemon. This really is effective for like competitive players and stuff like that. So you don't have to look just for that nature on the Pokemon. You can just simply change it at a whim. Next up, we need to talk about EVs and IVs. And this is something that is super confusing to a lot of players because these stats are not really talked about a whole lot in the actual game. You're never seeing these brought up but they are super important for your particular Pokemon. So first up, let's talk about IVs, which are what we actually are worried about breeding down. IVs are individual stats, or I, I don't even remember what they were called in previous games. I believe they are individual stats in Scarlet and Violet, but these are the stats that Pokemon are born with. They are born with them and they can only be changed through bottle caps. EVs, however, Pokemon are not born with and they have to be trained. And this can be done a number of different ways, which I have a video covering right here. You can check that out if you want to learn how to EV train. But EVs are not passed down through breeding, so you don't have to worry about EVs as much when you're breeding. Now, once you beat the game, you will actually unlock a feature called the Judge function. After you've completed all the storylines and rolled credits and you talk to Nurse Joy, she will give you access to the Judge function, which allows you to see the IVs on a Pokemon. Now, if you look at my Quack Wovel here, you can see that I have a bunch of IVs listed. I have a decent HP, a pretty good attack, a pretty good uh, defense, pretty good speed, well, decent speed, decent special defense, and no good special attack. This is a pretty, pretty bad Quack Wovel, but you are able to change these with bottle caps uh, by hitting the Pokemon to level 50 and using bottle caps to raise them all to the top level. Bottle caps are the only way that you're able to do this. You can do this with normal bottle caps or gold bottle caps. Normal bottle caps will simply uh, max out one IV where gold bottle caps are going to max out every IV that a Pokemon has. It's worth noting that the no good obviously is a zero point. There's nothing good about that. And this is only good in very certain scenarios. Like if a Pokemon, for example, wants to run in Trick Room, you'd want a zero speed because you want that Pokemon to be the slowest on the field, right? But every other stat unless you're running like very certain things you're going to pretty much want best so you don't have to worry about the pretty good or the decent or anything like that you want the best best is the best case scenario so like example this ditto has a best attack and best hp you want to focus on that now in terms of breeding down a particular IV you want to have a destiny knot and again you can get this at the deli bird present store I don't remember if it's under battle items or general items I gotta look it's under battle items. There it is, Destiny Knot. Destiny Knot is super important because you give it to the Pokemon with, it doesn't really matter because the idea of it is you give it to a Pokemon and it pulls five stats from each parent. So you're gonna pull three from one, two from another, and that is how it works. It pulls three from the Pokemon that's holding the item and it pulls two from the other parent. So for example, if you have a perfect IV Ditto, a perfect IV ditto and you then you're breeding with another perfect Pokemon. You have the chance to have five perfect IVs because your po both Pokemon have perfect stats and you're pulling five from the parents. However, there is that one random one that you have there because you're only pulling five, you're going to have a random stat. But doing this makes it super easy to simply go ahead and breed a bunch of Pokemon and just roll the one stat over and over and over again until you get the stat you're looking for. So it's very easy to get perfect IV Pokemon while breeding with a Destiny Knot. And the way I recommend doing this is if you're breeding with the Destiny Knot and you're, for, for example, trying to kind of power up your Pokemon and get better and better IVs with each Pokemon bred, you're going to have to stop and look at the stats of each of the Pokemon that you're breeding. And as you get better Pokemon with better IVs, 
keep swapping out the parent that you're breeding with so that way you continue to have higher and higher IVs each time you're breeding new Pokemon so you can continue to try and get more and more powerful Pokemon. Another way that you can move IVs down is the power items. And if you give a Pokemon one of these items, it will automatically transfer the IV to the offspring for whatever stat that these items are for. So the power weight is for HP, the power bracer is for attack, the power belt is for defense, power lens is for special attack, the power band is for special defense, and the power anklet is for speed. So for example, say I had a zero speed Pokemon that I wanted to transfer that uh, IV on, so that way that Pokemon was as slow as it could be for a trick room team, I would give that Pokemon the power anklet and the offspring would also have a zero speed IV. Now again, if you want to simply power up an IV without having to continue breeding, you can do this with bottle caps. It's a very easy process. Just go ahead and do that. You can also get Pokemon that are very good for breeding by doing the raid dens. The higher the raid den, the more perfect IVs that these Pokemon are going to have. And it's going to give you a variety of different Pokemon to breed with by just completing and catching a bunch of the raid Pokemon. Next up, we have hidden abilities. And these are abilities that are not naturally found on Pokemon. The only way currently to get hidden abilities is by catching a Pokemon in a raid den and that Pokemon luckily having a hidden ability or through like mystery gifts or stuff like that where the Pokemon is given to you with a hidden ability. That is pretty much the only way that you can get them right now, but you are able to breed down hidden abilities. The way you go about doing this is you want to have a Pokemon with the hidden ability. Now, if you're breeding it with a Ditto, there is a 60% chance that that hidden ability passes on regardless of the gender of the other Pokemon. So, for example, if you have a male Quaxley that has a hidden ability and you breed it with a Ditto, there's a 60% chance that that offspring has the hidden ability. Always a 60% chance, regardless of the gender of the parent. However, if you're breeding a male and a female Quaxley and both have the hidden ability, there is another 60% chance that that hidden ability is passed on. However, if you're breeding a male Quaxley with a female Quaxley and only the male Quaxley has the hidden ability, there is a 0% chance that that passes on. Only the female passes that on. So if you're breeding a male Quaxley and a female Quaxley and the female has a hidden ability, that is going to be a 60% chance that you transfer on that hidden ability to the offspring. And this works the exact same for egg group Pokemon. If you're breeding, again, let's go back to our Doug Trio scenario. We have a male Doug Trio and a female Pikachu and you're breeding the male duck trio female pikachu pikachu has a hidden ability it has a 60 percent chance to pass on that hidden ability to the pichu that you breed but if duck trio has the hidden ability and pikachu does not that offspring is not going to have the hidden ability next up we're going to talk about terra types the new gimmick that is in pokemon scarlet and violet terra types are what you're able to change the type of your pokemon to and give your pokemon additional stab however this does not apply to breeding. You cannot breed down a special Terra type. So if you catch something from a uh, raid den, let's say you caught a Blissey with fighting type Terra type, right? That is not going to transfer down to offspring. There is no way to push that Terra type onward at this time. There is a possibility that they add this through uh, DLC down the line. They did this with the GMAX Pokemon, but currently there is no way that you can transfer that down. So Terra typing still has to be changed, but from a separate method in game that I'm going to have a separate video on. The final thing I'm going to talk about in this video is egg moves. Egg moves are something that in the past you had to breathe down for, or you were able to transfer them through the daycare system. This game, you don't have to worry about that at all. So you can do this regardless of a Pokemon's egg group. Regardless of the egg group, I saw this online. You're able to give a Pokemon a mirror herb. Give the Pokemon that you want to send the egg move to the mirror herb. And if a move is in that Pokemon's egg move pool, you can transfer it regardless of the egg group. So the example that I saw online was Makuhita and Grookey. Okay, Makuhita had fake out. If you wanted to give that to Grookey, because Grookey has it in its egg move pool, you are able to give Grookey the mirror herb have them in your party and then we'll transfer the fake out over to the next pokemon this is pretty nice you don't have to use the daycare feature anymore obviously we don't have the daycare feature anymore but it was that's how you did it in sword and shield if you're still playing sword and shield i have a video for that if you want to check it out but you don't have to do that anymore you can simply move it over by you know having it in your party with the mirror herb and this is a nice change but that is everything you need to know about breeding in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I know that was a ton of information, but hopefully this helps you guys, whether you're breeding for competitive, for raid dens, or just for anything that you want to breed for. Hopefully this helps you out. But that is going to be it. If you found the video entertaining and helpful, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos like this in the future. Also, check out the Discord where people over there hanging out playing Pokemon all the time. Check out Dubby. It's my energy drink partner. Very good stuff. Put in some water, shake it up. Zero sugar, zero calories. Delicious flavors. 10% off with code Nico. And 
If you want to see more from me, check out this video where I talk about how you can transfer your save data from one Nintendo Switch to another for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And also check out my EV training guide so that way you guys can EV train the Pokemon that you're breeding so hard for. So that is it. Thank you again for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace.